Drop it. Hello, welcome back. So let's start with our C++ tutorial. For today, I'm going to start with the basic of C++. So I'll be covering more or less three topics here. So the first one will be the Hello World program, which uh, shows or demonstrates uh, how, how we print out Hello World into the screen. Second is that we're going to look into C out and C in examples. And then we're going to also look into cascading insertion and extraction operator. So let's now go to our online compiler. So like I mentioned before, this is our online compiler. You could uh, browse or, or just Google this site here, which will be our online compiler. So I have prepared our first program, which displays the Hello World program. So this is the basic C++ structure. What we have here are codes, which will allow us to display this particular text here. So what do we need? First thing is that we need to call the library, which is IOStream. This section here is what you call calling the library. And then this one here allows us to standardize our code by using namespace std. If you remove this line here, if you remove this line, what you need to do is you need to add for every code this particular uh, code here to make it standardized so to get off that hassle i would suggest that we use or include this particular line of code this section here is our called main function so for every program we're going to see here main so main is our program function in which once the compiler execute whatever that is inside this particular line of code will be executed this is a block of codes, this is open and close curly brace. And then this line here, we have C out, followed by the text here, hello world. When we use the function C out, what it does, it, it sends out text to the screen, okay? And then it should be terminated by a semicolon. These are your statement terminator. After that, we're going to use here return zero since we need to return back to the main function here a value. So as we go to our as we go to our functions, I'll be able to explain this particular code. But technically, this is the basic structure of a C++ program. Now to run the program, what you need to do is to click here run and then wait for this line of code here then you're going to see the output which is hello world okay so this simple program allows us to print using the cout function the text hello world okay so that's our first program for today now let's move on to the next program now like i've mentioned before most of our codes will be posted into this site here so if you go to this url you'll be able to see all the codes that i have created for you so let's proceed to our next example, which is example number two. Let me copy and paste this code and then go to our online compiler. Okay, all you need to do is to select and copy and paste the codes here. Now let's try to work on this one. So this is our second program that demonstrates the use of the C in and C out function. The C in and C out functions allows us to input data into our program and then allows us also to output, let's say, uh, a text or when we do processing, we result to an information. Okay, so first thing is that we need to incorporate our library here, which is IOStream, followed by using namespace std standard. Okay, next we have is our in main function open and close curly brace now if we if the compiler execute whatever items that are here will be executed okay so the first line of code this one here is our variable declaration variable declaration means that in c++ all the variables that will be used must be declared to do that you need to have here a data type followed by the variable name when we say int in C++, this refers to an integer data type, meaning that our inputs are whole numbers. 
NO1, NO2, and SUM are all variables that will hold values as we go on with our program. C out, as I mentioned earlier, is a function that displays a text on the screen. So when we say C out, enter first number, what it does is in informing the user to enter the first number. After that, we have here a function called C in. So once we use the keyword C in here, followed by the variable name NO1, so the user will be prompted to enter a value and the entered value will be stored into NO1. Same goes with this line here, that the user will be asked to enter the second number and then whatever the value that the user inputs will be stored in NO2. This section here is our processing. We're in, we're going to store, uh, we're going to do a certain operation here by adding NO1 and NO2. So once we add this, the sum will be stored to the variable sum. Okay, so next is this line here allows us to print out the value which is sum. This code here, backslash n, is a escape key character that allows us to print in the next line. Then, this uh, line here, c out, if you notice there is no quotation here, when there is no quotation and you're just printing out the variable, what it does, it, it prints out the value of the variable that is stored there okay so let's try to execute the code let me move this one here as you press run as you press run the user will be asked to enter the first number so let's say we input here 24 for the first number then followed by an enter key then we have here input the second number okay then we input here let's say 25 then press enter again. What it does, it computes for the sum which equals to 29. So that is our second example that demonstrate the use of the use of C in and C out function. Take note, C in allows us to input data and then C out allows out to print out text to the screen. Now let's move on to our third example. Let me get our code. So let's go back here and then scroll down let's now have the third example so let's copy and paste this line of code so rest assured you have your codes so just follow the link later so as i mentioned earlier we have the cn and cn function but there are also several operators that are associated with the cn and cf function we call this let's say if you notice we have two less than symbol and two greater than symbol in c plus plus the two less than symbol here are called insertion operator while the two greater than symbol are called extraction operators okay so what it does it's the same program but it allows us also to print out the values so let's look at our code this one here is our library then this one here allows us to standardize our code then we have our main function then these are our codes this section here is what you call your variable declaration in which we have three variables num1 num2 and sum c out followed by the insertion operator here prints the text enter two numbers C in followed by two greater than symbol known as extractor operator allows us to input the data. Once we have inputted the data, this section here allows us to compute for the sum of the two numbers by getting the variables or values inputted num1 and num2 and using the plus sign here or plus operator solves for the addition or sum of the two numbers. This one here allows us to print the output so c out followed by the insertion operator if you see this one here allows us to print out backslash n which is a escape key character 
this one here prints up the value of the data inputted for num1 this section here prints out literally the plus sign this section here retrieves the value of num2 prints out the equal sign and then prints out the sum so if we execute the program here let's click run So we are asked to enter two numbers. Let's say we input 40 for the first number. Now since you need to enter the second number, you could press spacebar and then let's say 55. That's for the second number. Then you press enter. What it does is it displays out our output. Now here, if this line here allows us to provide a carriage return or enter key. That's why there's a space here. But if we remove this, the text here will be uh, placed after the, this, this line of code. Now, this section here allows us to retrieve the data. So that's why if you notice, our first input is 40. This one is our 40. Then we print out the literally the plus sign followed by num2, which is the 55 here, equals and then the sum. So we have here 95. Okay? So, hope you're able to understand our three problems, but don't worry. Um, rest assured that you're going to see them in our description box links for our program. So, that's all for our tutorial for today. So, I hope to see you again in our next video. Thank you. Bye.